Alright. I'd just like to acknowledge the Darug and Eora people of this part of Sydney and this part of Australia. And uh, pay respect to Elders past, present and emerging. And uh, as tough as it's been for Indigenous people in Australia for since, you know, colonial settlement, uh, they continue to welcome us, and it's a beautiful thing. Mm. And uh, I just want to share that acknowledgement back and thank them. Mm. Uh, without them, we would be uh, not as uh, wise and as, and as um, cultured cool. as we are now. And uh, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Okay, today... We have a new series. Yes, we do. And this is going to take us out to the end of the year, pretty much, to the Christmas you know, season. And the series is called And It Was Good. My name is John. I'm one of the pastors on the team here. And it is a privilege to speak. I speak occasionally. Thank, thankfully, it's only occasionally for everyone else. And uh, it's always a joy and uh, great to be here today on a Sunday Funday. Thank you for the opportunity. And it was good. We, uh, we started the year with this thing, and it was good. What is a good year? Let's look forward to a good year. We're going to round this year out with, and it was good. Looking back a little, having a little bit of a look in the rear view vision, vision mirror, and saying, how was this year? And we got some testimonies today coming up in a little while uh, from some champions. And also that will be happening over the next few weeks as well. Uh, from people within our church community to share some of the stories that have happened uh, in their lives this year for good, good stuff that our good Lord has been doing in our good lives. So today I would like to kick it off and I will have the next slide, please. So slide number one, actually. And the question is this. We're going to pose this question to our panel today. Have you grown this year? Yep. There's some hmms, there's some hmms, there's some yups, there's some nods, there's some quiet. Have you grown this year? Have you grown this year? Yeah, one way or another. We all grow. It's hard to actually stay completely the same. In one way or another, we are growing. And we grow as... But we start off as babies. This is how the human thing works. You can see the kind of the, the timeline of human life there in the picture. And we start off as a baby. And great to have dedication today with uh, Iana and Marnea. So good. Uh, and the family's here. We have babies in this church. We've had Kiani. We have Graciela. We have Jordan. We have Miriam, Dooney, and so many others. And aren't babies awesome? Yeah. Babies are so good. They're just it's such a joy, it's such a joyous occasion. Not necessarily for the mother during the process, but it's amazing how that turns around so quickly. That pain turns into joy, that difficult situation turns into joy so quick. <laughs> and we get to enjoy that as well as a community. It's a beautiful thing to watch these little ones grow and they start to develop. When a baby's first born, I'm not sure if you noticed, many of the mothers would know this. They take the baby pretty quickly and they do a series of tests. They're called APGAR. I think it stands for something. Not sure what. APGAR tests. And they're looking at a bunch of different things. They look at the colour of the skin. They look at their eyes. Is the baby crying? Is there sounds? They're looking at the way they move their arms and legs and reflexes. And they give them a little score and they do that every so often. I think they do it straight away and then half an hour and a few hours later. And they're just looking for these... Uh, aspects of how the baby is doing, how is this little baby now that's outside in the big wide world, and that is the beginning of where we look at milestones. My wife, who I love very much, and I'd like her to give a hand because she's a champion. She's had six of these little humans, and uh, we have together. And, you know, after the third or fourth time, it's like, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, handball, you know, dogging half. And she also works uh, in child development as an occupational therapist and with kids. And this is a thing as a therapist that, uh, that they look at the milestones in a child's life as they grow. 
And of course, as you know, a baby comes into the world with completely dependent. They need every aspect of care in their life. All the needs need to be taken care of. It's so beautiful to have that dedication here today. And it's for the child, but it's, it's really for the parents yeah. and the grandparents and the wider community because we're, we're dedicating a child to, to live for God, but that, they're little. They, they don't know yet. And it's up to everyone else around them to provide that environment for them. The Bible gives us a very uh, clear analogy that this physical development relates also to our spiritual development. So it's like an allegory. On one side you can see a baby growing into a full-grown human, and on another side, God uses that very, very clearly in the Bible to demonstrate to us that there is not only physical milestones, but there are spiritual milestones that we should reach in our life. And we can use those as a kind of measure for growth. That's what we're talking about this year. Have you grown this year? Has there been a milestone? Have we been able to take steps forward and grow in that way? And it, to me, it's no clearer than the next verse on slide number two. Always been a fan of this verse, John chapter three, verse three. I didn't write it myself, but hey, I'm going to claim it. In reply, Jesus declared, I tell you the truth, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. Born again. It's become a bit of an old school term, born again. When I first became a Christian, it was pretty hot, like in the 90s, late 80s, early 90s. It was kind of the term, but it's gone a bit to the wayside. But it's the word of God. You can't change it. We must be born again. You must be born again to even see the kingdom of God, to become a child of God. And what is that born again situation? Even the guy who Jesus was talking to, how does that work? I'm an old guy. How can I be? I can't go back into the mother's womb. That's even weird to think about. No, no, it's not a physical rebirth. It's a spiritual birth. And that spiritual birth happens when we accept Christ into our life as our Lord and our Savior for the first time. When we repent, Pastor Andrew put it so clearly last week, we need to repent and we need to believe. It's two steps, two things that go side by side. Confessing and letting God know I've messed up. I haven't done it all well. And it's a good thing to come to you and ask for a new start. That is the born again experience. Have you been born again? It's a good question to ask yourself because it's the very first. So without the first step, how do you get to step number two, three, four, five? So I'd ask you and encourage you to think about that question. Have I been born again? Have I become a child of God? And what is that born again Christian? Pretty, pretty helpless. Pretty hopeless. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's all goo goo and gaga. Some people have very dramatic born again experience. Other people, they kind of ease into it. I know it appeared that way for me because I was from a completely agnostic world, no, no church and no religion. We didn't talk about that. That's a very Caucasian, Aussie classic thing. But I always thought about it and thought, wow, I wonder what the go is there. And when the time was right, God intervened in my life. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Bella. It's a good thing. And it seemed very dramatic, but it actually took about a year, uh, even about 18 months for me to kind of understand what was going on and then give my life to God. The next thing is slide number three. Let's read it. It says in 1 Corinthians 3, 1, Brothers and sisters, I could not address you as people who live by the Spirit, but as people who are still worldly, mere infants in Christ. Another version says babes in Christ. So it's one thing to be a baby. But then that baby becomes an infant, becomes a, a small toddler. How old is Jordan? Three, almost. Well, she's past infant, isn't she? Well, what's an infant? Infants, maybe, you know, three, six months, nine months. How old's Keanu? How old's Keanu? One. She's one. One, two, she's probably, yeah, about that. So it's a little, a little spiritual person. We're talking spiritually now. And uh, Paul says this, I couldn't talk to you as people who are mature, I've got to talk to you like little baby, you know, little infants. And he goes on to say, well, I gave you milk and you enjoyed the milk, but I couldn't give you meat because, you know, you couldn't digest it. It was a bit, uh, what's the milk? The milk is, hey, God blesses you. You know, we love to get blessed. And 
you pray and we'll be praying for you and supporting you. All that is, is good milk. We need milk. I love milk. love milk shake. But we also need meat. We need stronger food as well. And thank God we get a good dose, good meal here. A well, uh, diverse kind of meal here at Embassy. So let's obey in Christ. What's the next step? And have a think about this for yourself. Where are you at in your spiritual milestone? Slide number four, please. It's also in Corinthians 1, Corinthians 14, 20. Dear brothers and sisters, don't be in your understanding of these things, but be innocent as babes when it comes to evil, but mature in understanding matters of this kind. I'm not talking about spiritual gifts there. As uh, in, in, that, in that chapter. But look at that little guy. You see that innocent guy? That's the, the face of innocence right there. But Paul's encouraging us, don't just be childish in our understanding and stay there. We do need to grow and we need to mature. But be innocent when it comes to evil. Little child, you know, very small, they do the wrong thing, but they don't really know it, right? It takes a little while to... For them to understand, oh, hang on, I shouldn't touch that, I shouldn't do this, I shouldn't break that. So, be innocent as babies, as that little guy. But also, Paul encourages us to be mature and to grow. Where are you in your spiritual milestones? And the next slide, please. Number five. We're tearing through today. <laughs> All right. First jump to... 13, I'm writing to you who are young in the faith because you have won your battle with the evil one. So we've gone from baby to infant to toddler, small child to a young person in their faith. We're starting to get strong now. This is good. This is going well. Picture that person, perhaps teen or a young adult. I'm writing to you who are young in the faith, but you've overcome Evil, you're, you're winning the battle. Mm -hmm. We've all got a battle yes. of evil, not only coming from outside, but from inside as well. Yes. We want to change on the inside. So, you know, that, that nature that is passed on to us from way back, we're working this stuff out. Mm. I'm less aggressive, I'm less this, I'm less angry, I'm less impatient, I'm less, and I'm more caring, I'm more kind, I'm more loving, and okay. working these things out. And a young person is called to do that, young in their faith. Where are you at in your spiritual journey, in your spiritual milestones? Are you growing? Have you grown this year? Have you gone from step to step? I'd like to welcome up three champions. Can you put your hands together for Ashley, Ralph, and Jamie? I'm going to have a little panel, share a few testimonies. Church, you know, the 
group, but we didn't really care, you know, just yeah. wanted to hang out with my mates and whatnot. Yeah. Um, and then I'd say a few months ago, I was doing my trial HSC and I started experiencing a lot of anxiety, like severe, like I'd had panic attacks that would last days, like, yes, very bad. Mm. And, um, yeah, this, obviously, this, I don't know, it was a scary, scary time in my life. Mm. So I instantly turned to God, I didn't know what to do, and, yes. yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was hard time, was, and I'm still, I'm still, maturing, growing from that, I'm still learning yeah. to deal with that, <coughs> but straight out, without God, like, I don't know, like, I'd yeah. still be. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 Um, I'd say the people that I've made in my life as well have definitely helped me to get better today, be closer to God. Um, my family and people within the church as well definitely helped having those people like mentors and those Christian people in our lives that help us get closer to God that motivate us oh, and yeah. mm -hmm. whereas hanging out with mates at school like doesn't really get me anywhere. <laughs> so yeah, so people within the church as well, especially Pastor Ray, thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Just helping me and helping me, you know, study good the Bible, pray more like just Yes, helps me grow a lot, and thank God I've definitely grown this year, and mm. I'm growing more in God. Yeah. 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 Thank you, thank you, and thank you for being brave. Yeah. It's not an easy thing to talk about, yeah. and uh, in general, but in front of everyone, but praise God, thank you for your bravery mm. and sharing mm. your stories. It's awesome. Um, very key there, we talked about this on Friday night as well, that I noticed in the stories the power of a mentor, a mentor in your life. You mentioned Green, you mentioned key people around you. And you felt, uh, you feel that you can go to these guys. You know, how does that work for you uh, practically? You feel you can pick up the phone or you, you're meeting on some sort of regular basis? Yeah, well, look like when I get very anxious, I don't like to be alone. I always need that person, someone with me, whether it's a dad or someone. And always going to someone is, I don't know, for me, it's so helpful. Like, for a prayer or for yeah. just the company of someone and yeah, reaching out to people is, I don't know, very, like, I don't know, very helpful to me. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. That's so good. Very good. Mm. Mm. Yeah, come on. <laughs> and it's, it's the model of Jesus. Jesus um, put forth the discipleship model. And before that it was very much the nation, the nation of Israel and, and all that. And, and Jesus came and he took 12 and he really sowed into their lives and uh, spent that time. And I, I want to ask you that question. Who is your mentor? Do you have a mentor? Do you have someone that you can call upon? Someone who can support you in the tough times? We help. We all have tough times. Yes. Mm. And are you, are you mentoring someone? Mm. That's the model. Mm. Get a mentor and mentor someone. That's the model. This is how to grow. All right. Thank you, Ash. Thank mm. you. So good. All right. Raf, how you doing? You're right. Very good. Yeah, it's good. Very good. How's your year been? How's your year been? It's been good. Yeah. Do you think you've grown? Do you feel like you've grown this year? Definitely, yeah. Definitely. What, what way? How you got... Uh, Grown in uh, relationships as God given me, and things like strengthening relationships everywhere, church, youth, Hallelujah. especially with my um, youth leader Jenny. Hey. 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 <laughs> <laughs> definitely a year that I've grown. Um, also with my baby sister Miriam. So that's a big change for you, right? Definitely, it's been um, a big change, but I've learned to deal with new things yeah. and different areas where I'm not as used to. Yeah. But these things, I feel it's God's way of trial and it's to grow me. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Very good. Very good. Very good. Very good.
I'm 14. 14? Wow, mm -hmm. that's so good. And uh, you are Mr. Consistency. <laughs> that's, the way, that's the way we see it. We had youth and at church, and you're the guy who just rolls the sleeves up and you're in there. You turn up, you're the turn up guy. And we really appreciate that. Yeah. It's so good. Uh, without you and guys like you, what will we have? It's just sort of randomness. What's your. What makes you consistent? What makes you. Who turn up? Yeah. <laughs> um, I definitely love the place. Um, yeah. I'm especially, I'm right next door. It's not much of an excuse. But. Uh, but yeah, I, I love this place. And, um, I always try to make it. And I also definitely try to focus on my consistency. It was not that good last night. Like last time. It's been it's going well. Wow. Yeah. That's good. Very good. Very good. And you, you know this, your consistency is a blessing to others yeah. as well. So, you know, if you didn't turn up and if a couple of others didn't turn up, then there'd be nothing to turn up to. Mm. But you, you turn up, you make it happen, yeah, right. and uh, you, you get out of yourself. I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure. There's sometimes you just don't feel like it, right? You got exam, you got to study, you got this and that. Is there times like that? Yeah, definitely. But <laughs> I enjoy it, so I always try to turn up. I guess. <laughs> and praise God. Let's thank God for that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The consistent guy. And last of all, Jamie. The JK. Jamie. 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 Oh. <laughs> How you doing? Yeah, not bad. So? Yeah, not bad. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's good. How's your year been? Yeah, not bad. <laughs> not bad. Uh, pretty good, good, good. You good. think you've uh, grown this year? Oh, 100%. 100%. 100%. Wow, that's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> no, really. I do like that. No, I, I reckon. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. But um, I reckon I've um I've grown in many aspects in in life within this year. Yeah. Um oh mate, lovely me decided to get a second job. Um so like putting more on my plate really wasn't necessary, probably not, but I want a new car, so like it is what it is. Um so yeah, I'll put a lot on my plate and then and then being or starting to be a youth leader now as well as um yeah. Oh, come on, come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, and then also um, have a relationship, and then also family life, and then also try and find find some me time as well. And then also go to the gym. Yeah. But Jake yeah. doesn't let you have a day off. So. <laughs> no, um, no, no. Um, yeah, it's, it's a lot to. I don't know. At the beginning of the year, I thought, oh yeah, I could do it, and I started doing it, and I was like, oh crap, fuck, I have to do it now. Um, but then out of the whole lot, it made me realise if you just put God first and, and prioritise Him, like you can, doesn't doesn't matter what's on your plate, you know? You know, He, he helps you organise time for people, and He helps you organise um, your day to day, you know? Even though you don't want to wake up and start the car and drive an hour and a half. Um, <laughs> But yeah, like that hour and a half, I've got an hour and a half to worship God, you know? Yeah, yeah. You know? And he's, he's kind of callous in my mind and, and it changed the way that oh, my thought process on my day to day, you know? Mm. So I can, I can do what I've got to do, then also have energy and time for the family, the girlfriend, youth, you know? That guy's the same, stay on the couch. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, um, but yeah, and then also, also within the youth, um, me putting God first, to you, like at the beginning of the year, me, me, uh, sorry, when all of the youth guys came, um, everyone was heaps shy, right? And, and I don't like that. Um, and slowly, slowly, the boys started warming up to myself and, and then they started talking and then, and they, they, they come to me personal matters now. We've kind of built that relationship and that trust where, which is what you want with, with younger people, you know? Like, yeah. there's no point in you just e-bashing them because then they're just going to go back to on a Monday morning, you know? <laughs> but, um, but making that connection like, like a lot of people did for me when I was their age, yeah. it, um, yeah. it just works. Yeah. And, and 
that wouldn't work without him and I'm pretty keen where we sorry, where we all go within the future also. Yeah. yeah. That's good. Come on. It's pretty great. I mean you grew up in this church, right? This has pretty much been your home, spiritual home. For yes, yes. The whole life. And then you've gone to kids' church, you've gone to a youth yourself, you're on team, you're serving with the Meningos. Yes. And yes. now you're leading youth. You're leading that's a big step. That's a big step. How, how old are you? Um, 20. 20? You're mm. more mature than that, man. Mm. In your spirit, in your heart. It's fantastic. Mm. It's so good. Mm. It's a big responsibility. It's stuff you've been taking on. and mm. uh, It's been great and blessing to work with you in the youth. And you've, got, you've just got a, a fantastic future ahead of you. All of you do. Yes. And uh, thank God for you. All three of you. Mm. It's fantastic. Priorities is what I hear in your... Your testimony there, Jamie. And, uh, and it's true, the Bible says that you put God first, everything else will come. Money will come, you know, relationships will come, and all those other things that everyone's chasing after. We, we want those things, they're good things. But don't put them above God, and that's what you're, you're doing, you're putting God first. Thank God for you, man. It's awesome. Let's make some noise. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you. All right, all right, all right. Well, this is the future of embassy. This is a, a slice of the future. There's a lot more of these young guys and young adults, and and this is this is the the baton. The baton is being passed. Uh, it's a beautiful thing. As Ken said, we value every generation, and uh, it's not just words; it's real. All right, let us wind it up with a couple more slides. Slide number seven. Please, we've gone from baby to small child to, to, to young person, youth, young adult, and then we come to this point of maturity. First John 2, 13. I am writing to you who are mature in the faith because you are Christ who existed from the beginning. So we all need to be born. We all need to grow through this. And how much do those young believers, people who've newly come to Christ, I'm not talking about physical age, I'm talking about your spiritual age, need someone to help bring them up? We're talking about that consistency. We're talking about that, that, the mentorship. We're talking about prioritization. To come to this maturity, mature in faith. In faith. And the goal is to know Christ. We're overcoming evil in life. It's good. We're kicking goals. We're moving forward. But to know Him, uh, the Bible says this. Jesus said that He could almost set the pinnacle of His message to His own disciples in John seventeen three. Now this is eternal life, that they may know You, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom You have sent. That's the Word of God. That's the goal. Yeah. To know Him. That's the end goal. And to get there and to to learn and grow in that knowledge of God. That is maturity. There's such a thing they call aging gracefully. Have you heard of that term, aging gracefully? But some individuals, they even buck that system. They start off a bit goofy. And as they age, ooh, can I just have the next slide, please? <laughs> Any clues who that might be? <laughs> Goofy looking dude, right? George Payne. Look, a haircut. George. 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 He's half there. Next slide, please. George Clooney. Oh, yeah. 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 I don't find many men attractive here at Embassy. We're above average here. But George Clooney. George Clooney. He goes all right, but he didn't have a great start. He wasn't, uh, you know, going to be the sexiest man on earth on the cover of magazines when he's teens. He's a goofy looking dude. But he's, he's bucked the system somehow. Look at his 20s and you're like, is that really? But look at this guy. But we have our own. Can I have the next uh, slide, please? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Who's that 
<laughs> He's not as goofy as George, but that's a funny grin. You gotta, you gotta, it looks like it's at a wedding. <laughs> Who is that? Uh, next, uh, next slide, please. There you go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, I'm George Clooney. Yeah, Embassy, we're yeah. blessed. <laughs> that's just the next one, just for... Just as a reference, look at that, that is progression, that is development, that is growth, people, right there. <laughs> How long have you been a Christian, Mr. Ken, Pastor Ken, Master Pastor? Wow. Uh, 50 years. 50 years, wow, that's good, that's good. And you know, well, you all know the story, Ken and Mandy Kane, as, as, as the senior pastors, uh, you were on the board before that uh, grew into the senior pastor role. You were serving over at PHM AG, uh, serving faithfully for 20 years over there, 28 years, but who's counting? <laughs> and uh, you were executive pastor over there, you know, the everything guy and Mandy, uh, the same. And then you guys came here, stepped up into, into the senior pastor position. And uh, a step of growth, a step of growth, smaller church with bigger responsibility. And, uh, and quite a challenge for you guys. And you guys took Embassy from, you know, that startup, that, that new kind of thing, uh, that plant, and really created stability, uh, it's by the grace of God. Mm -hmm. And we're grateful for that. And in that, you've then gone and, and handed over in strength, handed the church over mm -hmm. in strength. It's not an easy thing to do. I don't know if it's, it's a very rare thing in our movement and in, mm -hmm. in Christianity to be able to hand over that way. Uh, to Pastor Reed, who's yeah. taken that baton and running with it. Reed and Jake together, it's so good. But in the meantime, you've moved up into the state executive and you're serving, is there 300 and how many churches in uh, New South Wales? 335 churches is what Ken's doing now. That's growth. And that's only in the last couple of years. So being a Christian for all that time, but it hasn't got old. It's mm. just been from strength to strength. Mm. How good is that? We're blessed. We're very blessed to have the fishers as, uh, as mentors and leaders and people to go to. And I'm, I've said it before and I'll say it again. I appreciate your mentorship yeah. in my life. Thank God. Thank God. But it's possible. Can we have the next slide, please? It is possible. Have you stopped growing? It is possible. Maybe we're sort of taking a backward step. It is possible. Maybe it's getting old. Yeah, I prayed and prayed and now, yeah, and so I prayed. Nothing happened. I don't know. I think I'm out. This is, I don't know what I think anymore. Or well, you're getting weak, kind of, you know, you used to serve and you used to do that, you used to be involved, but it's kind of, it's all hard. Those church people are hypocrites. Tell you what, <laughs> far out. Biggest bunch of hypocrites. We, you know, it's, it's true. <laughs> we all are hypocrites, right? That's what we're here for. We're trying to work it out. We're trying to get those things out. And sometimes it's easier than others. And I'm the biggest. Like Paul says, you know, Saint Paul said, "I'm the biggest sinner of them all." He was able to say that, admit that later on in his ministry. But thank God for His mercy and love. We need each other. Don't lose hope. Don't lose faith. Mark Fisher. How many years have you been a Christian? Uh, I think nearly 83 years. 83 wow. years. Yeah. Mariana, how many years? I'm springing it on. <laughs> <laughs> if your arithmetic's no longer so good at my age. Probably just over 60 years. 60. Wow. wow. How good is that? Mr. Hallelujah, Pele, how many years? Uh, sorry, 50 years. 50. Years this is good. This is good. Yeah. You don't seem like you're flaking yeah. away, bro. <laughs> None of you. You're stronger than ever. How good is this? This is the example of maturity. Mm -hmm. yeah. It can get old. You could lose hope. You could lose faith. But you've got to just keep on pressing on. Mm -hmm. pressing on. Yeah. I think of that verse, the righteous are bold as a lion. I think of Mark Fisher. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Bold as a lion, like, ah, come on. Yes. The lioness at the embassy, so good. 
you know, you can learn stuff off YouTube, you can watch things, you can sort of stay at home. But when the coal, when the hot coal is out of the fire, it starts to just lose its heat. This is the fire. This is the, this is the, 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 the half time. And you've got a lot of great coaches here, a lot of great examples. It's very good. So stick with it. Don't lose hope. The last slide, and we'll wind it up. Slide number 14. Classic. Uh, classic verse. A beautiful verse. It's so strong. Isaiah 40, verse 30 and 31. Even youths grow tired and weary. I'm oh, tired. I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> Young men stumble. Whoa. And fall. But those that hope in the Lord will... Renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. I love the story of Moses. Moses, you know, what a life. What an incredible life. Taking millions of people out of slavery and, you know, such an awful situation. Bringing them into the wilderness. He was 120 years old, it says in Deuteronomy. And when he died, his eyes were not weak nor his strength gone. Not one bit at 120 how good is that? Your physical age doesn't matter. It's your spiritual age that matters. It's your milestones, your spiritual milestones. How's your year? Have you hit some milestones this year? Have you stopped growing? Or are you growing? Even my, I'm still learning. I'm still learning. All the way. And knowing Him. You know, this is a crazy thing. Have that, having that longevity and that testimony in our church of people who've been knowing God for years and years, a generation. Let's stand. Shall we stand for a day?